Broadcasting from the Golden Spread of Texas, this is The Fred Hughes Show. With each episode, we introduce to you an inspiring person or message to help you grow and unlock your potential in life. I'm Fred Hughes, professional photographer, pastor, teacher, author, and your show host. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to this episode brought to you by the Faithful Partners of Decision Ministry. Well, hello once again. This is Fred Hughes with The Fred Hughes Show. We're so glad that you made it tonight and uh, excited about what's going on in the world. Um, There's a lot of things that actually are going on. My wife is actually running for a um, uh, political position, and so we are very busy in our in this season. Uh, she's running for a college board of education um, position, and it's been an exciting, interesting thing. We've never really participated this deeply in the political scene, so it's all new to us. <laughs> And buying the signs and getting everybody out and going and shaking hands and going through the speeches and all of those kinds of things quite quite consuming and uh, so it's been at least at the least very interesting for us as uh, as we have kind of traveled through some new new territories but it's exciting and uh, you know life should be exciting and you should kind of put yourself in a place to where you can a make a difference and b um, Keep yourself youthful because it, it, it you've got to push yourself just a little bit. But uh, uh, if you give yourself some purpose, uh, then <clears throat> then life is uh, just a lot more fun. So anyway, tonight I just have uh, a few things that I want to share. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a few things I want to share with you, and uh, just it, I'm, I don't plan to go long, but uh, I hope it will be very um, gratifying to you. Uh, this particular a day that we're in. I think this is the uh, second day. Uh, the beginning of, of the Passover began yesterday, and so we're we're moving into that Passover season, headed right to toward uh, Easter and the resurrection. And um, a lot of people don't like the word Easter. I don't think it's uh, a bad word necessarily. It's just it what well, we've called our holiday here in America. But <clears throat> anyway, there is. Um, there's a lot going on, and this Passover time is is a is a special time for the body of Christ to kind of gather around and bring to remembrance uh, good things that God has done for us. And you know, it, it, uh, the holiday it doesn't matter which holiday it is. Uh, holidays are always for some people they're it's a blessing, and some people it's kind of a curse depending on your life events that have happened around that particular. Uh, <clears throat> day in history or time frame. So um, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, there Jesus covers all the bases, I believe. I think he is, uh, I think the word of God is so phenomenal in that it really does, it really is based in a situation to where it always brings good news for the hearer. And no matter what time of the year, what time, what has happened in your life, uh, Jesus knows how to come and minister to you through the Word of God, and especially at, at holiday seasons when we kind of turn our face and begin to seek Him, uh, as the Bible instructs us to do. I want to kind of start with uh, Psalms 27, chapter 27 of Psalms, <clears throat> verse 10, it just says, when my father and my mother forsook me, then the Lord will, will take care of me. When my, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Then, right then. And you know, being forsaken, being abandoned, being rejected, uh, a lot of times, a lot of, pe- a lot of people face those kinds of things. And, it, you know, Jesus was rejected by his own kind. And, and the triumphal entry uh, that, that kind of began the process was one that uh, Jesus was heralded as, you know, 
and, and but then almost immediately he was rejected. Just just a day or two later, here, you know, the world is rejecting who who they were calling the King of Kings, the the uh, the Messiah. They were identifying him as the Messiah, but their concept of who a Messiah was was quite different than than uh, you know what he really was and how he really came and what he was accomplishing. And so it's really vital to kind of look into that. I want to read a little bit deeper into this particular uh, verse here. So this is David, who's who's written the Psalms, uh, and, he's, and he goes on to say, that, says, he says, then the Lord will take care of me. I love the end of that first, that 10th verse. But it says, teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth pass because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the, one, to the will of my adversaries, for false witness has aris- arisen against me. And that was kind of exactly where Jesus was. He'd been forsaken by his own men. He'd been you know he's 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 been betrayed and forsaken by his own his own he's carried in front of the court there's people that are accusing him faulty uh there's all kinds of things going on in this and david had experienced some similar things so he could re, you know he was he's relate jesus was relating as we can relate to this right here and it it just it just goes on and says I would have lost heart unless you had believed, unless I had, and excuse me, I would have lost heart unless I would have believed that I would see the goodness of God or the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so, you know, we need to see the goodness of God. We need to see the the rescue. We need to see the Savior. We need to see the goodness that God has for us while we're still alive. You know, when we get, when we fly and die and and, and look back at it, it's going to be, that'll be glorious, but that's not all we need. We need something in the, in the dirty now and now, here and now, don't we? And so, you know, sometimes whenever, especially whenever a holiday and maybe this one, uh, this time frame is not good for you in particular, but um, I'm just saying, here's, here's what comes. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, we kind of got into the political thing. Well, the political picture kind of heats up sometimes, and and you have adversaries, and so this is just everyday normal life. But sometimes, for you in particular, you know, it's not everybody faces your problems or your issues or your 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 things. And uh, David is one that's, that that's kind of calling that out right here. He says, you know, if you hadn't showed up to strengthen me, you know, my heart would have fallen and uh you know and so it verse 14 says wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart wait i say on the lord so whatever situation is in your life the uh the the answer is always jesus it it always has been jesus and it always will be but to to turn our face toward him to set our face to turn our ourself and look full into the face of the living God, that's where our comfort. That's where our He is our Savior. He is our provider. He is the one who has all things under control, and the, He is more importantly the one who loves you. And so I I just want to encourage you in that little brief word uh, because it is so powerful. It is it is the 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 full facility of God to bless, to keep, to lift you up, to come around you in your time of need. Even even if your mom and dad, even if the earthly people that you count on forsake you and move away from you, even if your adversary seems so gigantic uh, that they, that you could never overcome them on your own, uh, you have an adversary in the in in the Holy Spirit, you have a comforter who who comes to bring comfort to your heart 
that that verse down there talks about he will strengthen your heart he'll bring comfort to your heart he'll bring peace into your heart that's important that we learn to wait a moment regain our thoughts david one time was at ziglag one of my favorite stories and you know everybody had turned against him Every, i mean even his own men were going to trash him out you know but he it says david it says that david went aside and he shook himself he, he shook off all of those those worldly uh, you know offenders that were coming at him he shook off all those the thoughts about them and then he it says that he encouraged himself in the lord he he began to come into the presence of the almighty god who was his his provision and his his um, uh, the one who loved him the father that came in and put his arm around the son and 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 shielded him protected him and caused him to be successful so you know you have that same savior he lives inside of you you he, he, the word says he never leaves you nor forsakes you in other words, he's never going to go away. He's always going to be there whenever you need him. No matter what kind of an adversary comes against you, no matter what kind of, of, of past things in your life bring that depressive thought, uh, that, that thought depressive uh, thing that comes to try to overcome you and pull you back and, and, and downgrade you. And, uh, you know, it's just... The, the enemy of your soul wants to stir those things up and bring you down, in, in, and he's pretty good at it. That's why we need each other, but that's more importantly, we need the Lord. And so it's, it's like David, sometimes we're, we're kind of all alone in this party, and we need to know that we have an advocate. We have a father that is, that is he's a father to the fatherless. And that's kind of what verse 27, 10, um, Psalms 27, 10 says. It basically, it, 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 it foundationally says, I'll be a father to the fatherless. I'll be a mother to the motherless. I will, I will come and I will be there for you uh, like no other. And that's, the, that's so the truth. And so I just want to encourage you today that the, the truth is that God loves us beyond what we could possibly even imagine. And I want to I want to just kind of point out a couple of quick things. Uh, one of the things that that we don't understand is how important our own words are and the importance of how we go about saying things is 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 kind of the gate that lets God work in our life more mightily. So if we say the right things, those, those things that we say are become seed that go out and they're sown into the atmosphere and they are given a chance to rise up and produce. And so our words, uh, I love the, the examples all through the scripture of the word of God being compared to or being, it, it says that it's the seed. It's a seed. And so it acts like it, we're given that example so that we can see something that and, and kind of follow and see how it works. It's not just that it's like that, but it's but it acts like that as well. And so when we speak a word like I can't or we can't, uh, that's your enemy that produces. That's a seed that will go out and and. Agree, and it, and it will come into agreement with what you've just said. No, you really can't. You don't believe you can, so you you honestly can't. You are prof you're decreeing a thing that is not as though it is, and it will become exactly what you decree. So it's, it's something that we don't want. And sometimes, whenever we do face these the rejection we when we do face times where we feel like we have been uh, forsaken when we when we see uh, with our own eyes uh, the enemies coming after us in a vicious way 
uh, hopelessness begins to rise up, and we have to really watch what it is we begin to confess with our mouth, believe in our heart. That's how we get born again, right? We confess with our mouth, we believed in our heart, and we received eternal salvation from God. Well, that's the way the whole kingdom works. Um, so whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, we don't want to get into agreement to say the words that he wants to put into our mouth and, and cause us to reap a bad harvest because we're not speaking the right thing. So what do we want to speak? Well, we want to speak the word of God. We want to speak the seed, the incorruptible seed into our life. <laughs> that, that, that's so simple that, you know, take a theologian to come and confuse you to where you couldn't, couldn't understand it because it's really, really, really simple. It's just zip your lip until you have something good to say, until you can get a hold of something that you want to put out there and it'll produce in your life. And, you know, it's, it's, I came from a kind of a church background that really didn't have that understanding, but um, bless God, we knew, we knew Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. We knew, you know, how to get born again. And maybe we didn't have the opportunity to apply that to the rest of the kingdom work, of the other things that are in our life. Uh, but eventually when we heard that teaching, when, we, uh, when, when somebody opened the scriptures to us, we began to see it. Because and we weren't weren't going to deny it because we understood how the principle worked to get our, our our life changed to get to become a new creature in Christ and so as we read as we study as we learn we began to understand this principle and how it works and why it is so powerful and why it is so important that we do it so you know. This uh, part of it is, is kind of how we grow up. Um, and like I said, uh, how we think about money, perhaps, is based on perhaps the way that we grew up. <clears throat> and if you kind of grew up in a, in, in a, um, our parents were, were, they came through the Great Depression, you know, to our grandparents did for sure. <clears throat> and um, they, they experienced some things that, Nobody on, um, not, not many, very, very many people on the earth here, in, I mean, in the United States, have experienced the kind of things that they experienced. So they, they came and began to raise us up and began to plant in us uh, a bit of, of, of uh, um, lack mentality that, you know, that things can get bad. And so you need to kind of hoard, you need to kind of hold up, you need to be careful and all of this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, the generations after me, we've never really seen anything like that in our life. And so we don't, we've never had to be fearful of that. So it's kind of, it's part of it is the way we've grown up. Part of it is just the way that we've talked to other people and we've heard what they said. <laughs> and that's not always the best thing. So, you know, what we need to do is go to the word of God because that's the seed that we want to sow into our life. That's what we want to get down into our spirit so that it will come up and out of our mouth and produce good things. So that's, that's the process is that we, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, then faith starts rising up in us. And it's that faith based on the word of God that we want to let come out of our mouth and begin to pro, uh, profess it and declare it and decree it uh, as though, and then believe that what we're declaring, what we're decreeing, what we're saying is going to be produced. A, a farmer doesn't take a seed out and plant it and then say, well, I don't really think that'll come up, but you know, we'll give it a whirl here, you know, well, probably he doesn't know enough to get it to come up and live and survive because there first comes the blade, then the, then the ear and then the harvest. And so there's some other things that have to be done along the way to maintain some of that, that, and, and, and reach the harvest. 
well, likewise with, likewise with us. We, you know, need to profess and put those little seeds out there, and we need to continue to expect that they're going to produce a harvest. And we may need to nurture that by, by not negating it and immediately going back to our old ways of saying, well, that probably ain't going to work. That, that, that's never going to, uh, you know, I think I can't hardly believe that. You know, all this, all this stuff that we allow to jump out and just negate what it is that we just said earlier, you know. And so one, one person told me one time I like this. He said, he said, what you really believe is what you say after the word but. A lot of people say, well, I believe, you know, in healing and everything, but. Now, what they really believe is what they're fixing to say right after that but. So, <laughs> so that is uh, kind of true because a lot of times we'll, we'll say what the Bible says. We, we know what, you know, the truth is sometimes, but then w our experiences don't line up with our, um, the truth that we know. And so we wind up with our own mouth sometimes tearing down the faith that we, the, the very things that we have proclaimed over our life. That's, that's uh, not what we want to be doing. So during this Passover season, I think, you know, part of, of, of the whole season is to remember what Jesus did for us, the price that he paid for us to be able to have what we have. And so when we, uh, we are, you know, during that Passover time frame, it is so important that we, we understand that we've got, he, he laid himself down so that we could partake of him, so that we could become one with him. Man, that is just so um, that there is this infusion together with the, the creator of the universe in that we join him because through his death, burial, and resurrection, we were incorporated into him. And, and now then we can say, in, we are in Christ. E, that word e in in the, in the Greek it means into. We are embedded in him. Jesus said, uh, that it says, if you want to know the Father, they were saying, hey, show us the Father. And he said, if, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was saying, we and me and the Father are one. And that is exactly what he wants to make every human being on the face of this earth. And that's what this time frame that we're celebrating is all about, is that he he laid himself down. He, be, he stepped off of the throne of God Almighty and took on the form of a man. He walked out and lived perfectly a life that had no sin whatsoever. And then he laid it down for our sake. And it's, it says he was hanging on the cross, and he says it, he looked out over the the people before him, the ones that put him on the cross. And he says, Lord, give them, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he went on to say that, you know, he, he, for the, for the um, joy, for the joy, oh, man, that word. He says, for the joy. He looked at us, and he, he, had, he was taking, he, he had great joy in knowing that even though he's being rejected and set apart, that the Father would come, the Advocate would come and restore him and put him back into a place to where that he could receive us, the precious fruit of the earth, he calls us, that he would receive this harvest from what he had accomplished, what he had done. Man, <laughs> wow. You know, that we would become his bride, that we would become in him, united with him like a husband and a wife, to be fused together and become one. Wow. That's incredible. That's wonderful. That's awesome. 
And this is an awesome time of the year. I, uh, I love, I love this season of thought because it really does make, give us a reason to kind of focus in on, on the price that he paid and the wonderful thing that he has done for, for us, uh, provided for us. So man, I'm, I'm just telling you, let, Let's know that the deliverer, um, the Passover happened because why? Um, the the children of Israel were coming, coming and they, they were going to get set free. Okay. So the Passover basically re, re, represents that a Savior comes and sets us free. And that is a Passover meal that they ate right before the exit uh, out of their bondage. Uh, out of slavery. And listen, my friend, if, you, if you're enslaved by something, if you have an addiction, if you have fear, if you have uh, something that, that has, has pornography or some of these things that enslaves you, that has ho- held you captive, my friend, it's time for you to be set free. There's a Savior that wants to save you out of that. He wants to take you from where you are and released you from your captives and set you free and free indeed. And so I'm just, I'm speaking to anybody that might have any kind of addiction, any kind of anything that would be enslaving you, drugs, alcohol, any, anything like that, any addiction, um, any just, just bad thinking, um, whatever it is, I just want to encourage you that there is a Savior. Uh, There is a way for you to be set free. And as you partake in the Passover meal, perhaps, as you just take of communion with God, uh, you understand that you are taking what He has and eating of it. And you're becoming, he comes in and transforms you supernaturally into a whole new being when you get born again. And so once you're born again, you're a child of God. Now then you have the right to be free. So anything, if you're born again, anything that is a, that is trying to come and oppress you, you have the right to resist it and cause it to flee. You have the authority to get that out of your life. If you're not born again, then, then you need to partake of this wonderful blessing of salvation that Jesus provided for you so that you can be a, a captive that has been set free and not one who is still in bondage and still being tormented on a regular basis because you have no protection. You have no, you have no advocate that that's strong enough to come and take you out of that situation. That's the reason you need Jesus, because He is able. He paid the price, and then He gives you the opportunity to take the price. He doesn't demand that you receive it. You can reject Him. You can not accept what it did he did the gift that he offers you you can you can go your own way but let me tell you friend um you have to uh, you have to deal with the consequences of of not making that choice okay uh, you have a grand opportunity sometimes to you know buy the motorcycle of your dreams and it comes up and you reject it and you don't do it and it's lost and gone forever. That 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 somebody else is going to come along, and take that one, and move it on down the road. Well, listen to me. You have the golden opportunity. You have the the opportunity that's the, to to receive the greatest gift ever given, the the most precious, most expensive, most um, costly thing. That, I mean, it's way beyond diamonds, rubies, and gold way beyond the price of that. And it's offered to you, but you don't have to receive it. You can let that deal go and try to find a better one if you want to. I don't recommend it, but you have that choice. 
And so I'm just telling you, make a good choice. The Bible says, even gives us instructions, says, choose you this day life <laughs> and life more abundant. And choose you life or death, you know, blessing or cursing. And it says there, there's two choices out there. You can make either choice, but he recommends, and so do I, that you make the choice of receiving Jesus into your life, living by his word, filling yourself up with these words and speaking them, those things that be not as though they are and believe until you see them come to fruition in your life. Uh, and you have this advocate called Jesus Christ who sent his, his spirit, the Holy Spirit, one just like him, but able to minister to every person alive on the planet right now. And he gives us and empowers us with him living in us. See, when Jesus walked the earth with the, with the disciples, it was Emmanuel, God with us, along, alongside us. But now we have even a greater thing, much greater thing, because now it is God in us. Never leaves us, never forsakes us. I mean, G Jesus had to go and do some other things, and there were times when he would he would come back and be with the disciples, and they'd have him right there, and then there'd be other times he would have to go somewhere else, and they would have to go somewhere else. It's not like that. It's like it's different from that. It's better than that in that the Holy Spirit is here. He never separates himself from you once you're born again. Uh, I'm telling you, that's good news, and we celebrate it because it's good news. And uh, so that anyway, that's that's kind of what I have for today. I want to pray a prayer over you and just and just um, declare something uh, because we have those um, those negative things that come up and it says uh, you know I can't or I won't or the money talks to me or uh, all these negative things that are in there, and we need to begin to profess some good things. So I want to profess something good over you before I close and go away. And you know that God will take my words and grow them up and make something good into your life. Let me, I want to pray your joy will be full. There's a scripture that says that your joy can be full and overflowing. It, 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 you can have the fullness of joy in your life because Christ comes in to you. <coughs> if you're born again, you have the joy of the Lord. And it's in another place it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so we can call upon the joy in our life to rise up in us and to make us strong, to give us strength. I pray your home would be peaceful, that you would be a man and woman of peace, and that your house would be, a, would be a haven of the peace of God's presence. He is the prince of peace, and he needs to be the prince over your house, the prince over your life, and the presence that he provides you will cause you to walk in perfect peace. In fact, that that is the abundance I want to speak over your life is that it would be a life based on the peace of God that passes your understanding because sometimes we don't understand how to operate in the things of God, but if we're in his peace, he'll reveal it to us. And finally, I want to pray over you. I want to declare over you that your sleep would be sweet. That when you lay your head down at night, that there wouldn't be an invasion of fear and an invasion of disruption, a, a, a stirring of confusion uh, or dreams of horror and terror, but that your sweet, sweet sleep would refresh you, would renew you, would restore you, would cause you to feel completely peaceful and rested when you arise in the next morning because God makes he he he, he makes his his um 
mercies <laughs> new every morning. And so every morning when we wake up, grab that cup of coffee and get into the presence of God, He will bring a new mercy, a new strength, a new word, a new encouragement, a new healing, a new whatever you need into your life. I just take that time to separate yourself and get with God and allow Him to bring that those those new things into your life. Every morning, He makes all things new, and that is really good news. A lot of our cases, and we can lay down this other stuff. It's like when when I was a kid, I had a little thing called an etch a sketch or whatever, and you know we could we could. Uh, make those little, we could draw all over this little tablet and then we pull this little thing and whoop, it'd all go away. You have a brand new sheet, you know, when you lay down. And a little later on, my kids had had the etch sketch They would, you could draw on it. It did exactly the same thing. It was just a fancier version. I, I imagine it's still around. <laughs> but anyway, new every morning. That is a good word for you. It's a good word for me to know that God starts all over, gives us a fresh new day, a fresh new start. And we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to just tell you that uh, we we love you and we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we hope that uh, you'll support us. We have, uh, we have some things. In fact, I've got a brand new thing here. You can scan this and It'll go and, and let you give a little, um, let you sign up as a partner. And uh, so if you if you like those little scanny things, I'm, that this is fancy new stuff. Boy, howdy. Uh, so anyway, I'll give you, I'll leave it up there a little, little while so you can scan that. Uh, also, we have a um, uh, another thing that is very important, and that is that we have a, a call-in number. And uh, I'm going to put that up as well, 806-338-2929. And you can call that. They, these people speak English, Spanish. Uh, we have people that can that can go either way, whatever you're comfortable with. And um, that is a blessing. They want, they'll pray with you, for you, and agree with you, explain some things to you. They're wonderful folks. And uh, so take advantage of that number. Area code 806-338-2929. And so, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go back to the little uh, QR co code because I don't think I left that up quite long enough to get the phone out and get ready. But from here, I want to just say good night and goodbye, and we'll see you again. Tune back in uh, next week, every Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, Central Time, USA. We have we began this meeting, and if um, if you're out of the country, uh, just understand that you can find that little time buddy program, and it'll tell you you know what what time differentiation there is, and when you would have to queue in. So be blessed with that, and uh, just just know that you can get you can hitch up. You don't just have to hit and miss. We have something good each week. Either I bring a program. Uh, that's good, or a, word, a brief word to you, or I'm, I have guests quite often uh, that come in and uh, and have great things to say. So uh, we always try to have something good to line up and uh, good things for you uh, that will encourage and build you up in, the fa in your faith. And we hope that you would just share uh, the opportunity with other friends, uh, those little those little like buttons and uh, ringing the bell depends on what format. <clears throat> you know, we we broadcast out in uh, in twi live in Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, and um, oh, the business one. Um, hmm. yeah. Anyway, there's four deals. If you go to the our our regular website. Um, and you can go into the um, the area where it just says media, and there's a whole list of places where this goes. We make we take the sound and we turn it into our regular podcast, uh, the Fred Hughes Show, and uh, so you can see the pictures and the images if you'd like to to do that on, on those first four of those or first several of those after 
the first four are live. And then after that, or their replays, uh, we post the, the video and audio uh, simultaneously up for that. And then also we, we transform it into just a sound only, which is a regular podcast. And it's, it's everywhere. Um, uh, uh, YouTube and um, iTunes and Spotify. Um, we just hitched up with um, Amazon Music. You can go and listen on that. Um, Pandora. I, I'm, it's just everywhere. <laughs> so it's The Fred Hughes Show. And just put that in wherever you like to listen and tune in to us each week. So once again, God bless you. We'll see you down the road. And please share. Share your faith and share our link here in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure and get the download and the uh, show notes that we have available for you. If you agree that this is place to be, invite your friends. Use those little buttons to uh, connect us to your Facebook friends and others. And if you have not subscribed, do it today. Check out our free downloads. This is the Fred Hughes Show signing off.